This is what I was trying to do. I was trying to model the number of letters in a dog's name. So if we had a sample of a thousand dogs, we wanted to create a data set representative of that. And this is how I was going about doing it. So I just created a couple of axes here. Uh, this axis is the number of letters and then dogs with one letters in the name. Do they, do they exist? One letter dog names, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And let's just suppose, you know, eight is kind of a maximum, although in real life it's probably not, just for the purposes of this demonstration. And then if we start, you know, looking at dogs, dogs names and, and understanding how many letters are in them, yeah, maybe there is one dog uh, that has a single letter name. Let me know uh, if that's the case, if you've ever heard of that. But if we started doing this, it would start to look something like this. So here I'm saying there's one, two, three, four, five, six dogs that have four letter names. That's what I'm saying. Let's say there's seven dogs that have five letter names. And then let's say there's uh, five dogs that have six letter names. And then this will gradually tail off uh, towards the end. And maybe, uh, maybe there's a dog with a nine letter name as well. So the distribution, the distribution of the data might look something like this. Luna, who has four letters in a name, would of course fit into this category. So using our custom probability approach that we've been using previously, I started building this distribution. And then I realized, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? There is a better way to do this. That's because this data conforms to a particular shape. And we can see, we can put a nice curve on that data there, and we can see it conforms to that kind of bell curve shape. So maybe a few of you are having some uh, flashbacks to kind of statistics classes, uh, high school or university, but what would we call that distribution? Uh, can you remember what would we call that distribution? But the point is here, statistics, yes, statistics can be useful sometimes, quite a lot of the time to be fair, but statistics supplies us with pre-made distributions that are useful in real life for problems just like this, modeling the number of letters in somebody's name because of the way the data is distributed. So let's check out what's the name of the distribution. Have you remembered it? So we call this the normal distribution. And I think, you know, the normal distribution, it's a reasonably informative name because it's data that is that is normally distributed. Just bring that into your shot there. It's data that is normally distributed. You know, most of the values are towards the middle and then the values kind of tail off. So it looks something like this. It's our bell curve. So this distribution is established, people use it, and crucially, it's preloaded into Excel along with a few other probability distributions that we can use and that, yes, can be useful. So how do we configure a normal distribution? What are the essential properties that we need to be clear about? Well, firstly, the mean of the distribution is the first thing that we tell Excel. We're saying we want you to use the normal distribution, this pre-supplied distribution with a mean, which is the average value. The average value, and we could go into a conversation about different kinds of averages, but the most commonly occurring value, and let's just remind ourselves, in the context of dogs, uh, this would be five we would set up the normal distribution with five as the mean because it's the most commonly occurring value. So that's one thing that Excel needs to know. Excel needs to know the mean. And this is our first key concept really in statistics, which is a measure of, measure of central tendency. That's what we say. When we're looking at a data set, there's two things we have to establish straight away. The first thing is a measure of central tendency. Most of the values towards the middle of this data set, when we set it up like this, what are they? And there we're talking about averages. So uh, we have to give Excel the average, then we have to do something else, which is give it a measure or at least a sense, 
a measure of dispersion. Dispersion. So dispersion is how spread out is the data? Dispersion. And these are the two key concepts for statistical analysis. Central tendency and dispersion. Any statistical analysis, it doesn't matter how clever the people sound or how academic they are or how old they are, whatever. Any statistical analysis of a numerical data set starts with a measure of central tendency and a measure of dispersion. What do we mean by dispersion? Well, dispersion, to go back to the dog example, how spread out is the data? How spread out is the data? So uh, this, if we take this as one example, the data might be less dispersed. The data might look more like this. Always fun, drawing shapes with probability distributions. The data might look, might look like this, so we'd say this is less dispersed. And let me know what is the statistical word? What's the measure for dispersion? Or what's one of the measures for dispersion? Or it might be more dispersed. So the data might look something like this. We can see how the data here is more spread out the measure of dispersion. So let me ask you, what in the st statistics do we have to measure dispersion? Two ideas, variance and standard deviation. Variance and standard deviation. Specifically, we are interested in standard uh, deviation here. So let's quickly look at what standard deviation is. Well, if we know the mean for any of our values, say, it's, say we're looking at a value here, any of our values is a certain distance from the mean. A certain distance from the mean. If we go back to our dog example, let's say the mean is five. Okay, so three is a distance of two from the mean, yeah? And we could do that for all of the values in this data set. One is four from the mean, seven is two from the mean. Then we take all of those distances from the mean and average them out with a small adjustment. We're not going to talk about average them out. Take a standard of the deviation. How about that as a measure, measure of dispersion? Statistics is exciting. Once you start digging into it, it's really useful stuff. So we talk about standard deviation as a good measure of dispersion. So these are the two things that Excel needs if we can supply that information, we can access the normal distribution and Excel is going to take a value from the normal distribution, which means we don't have to do any programming of custom probability distributions. How cool is that? So how does it actually work? So how do we get a value out of the normal distribution? So we have to say to Excel, this is the mean, the measure of central tendency. This is the most commonly occurring value, although that would be median. All the statisticians, statisticians out there going mad. We need to tell them what's at the middle of the data set. And then we need to tell them the standard deviation, which gives a sense of dispersion. Now, if we can do that, Excel can give us a value according to those parameters from the normal distribution. How does that work? How cool is that? If we can get that working, how does it work? Well, it works with the concepts of zero and one. The normal distribution says, okay, we've got one here. That means 100% of values, 100% of values lie to the left of this value in the distribution. Then on this side, we have zero. That's because 0% of values lie to the left of this value in the distribution. Can you see how this might be coming together? So if we can generate a value between 0 and 1, generate a value between 0 and 1, we can then extract a value from the normal distribution according to the specific parameters we put in. How cool is that? I love it when statistics creates practical value like this. So, how can we find a value between zero and one in Excel? We can use the RAND uh, formula, of course, to do that. And then in VBA, we have the RND function too. So say we have a random value and Excel has turned out uh, 0 
So we know we've got zero and one here, 0 0.56 is going to be around here. So XL is gonna go that far along the distribution and then return a value, return a value according to the mean and the standard deviation that we have inputted. If we've inputted a mean of 10 and a standard deviation, I don't know, a, a standard deviation of five it might be, then something, this value is gonna be, well, it's gonna be just above 10. And how far it is above 10, that depends on what? That depends on how dispersed the data is our measure of standard deviation. So there's your quick introduction to using the normal distribution in Excel. As we see, it can save us a load of work statistics with these pre-programmed, commonly used probability distributions. The normal distribution is one of them. We're gonna see in the walkthrough video how we put this into practice. Hi everybody, it's Chris here. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you enjoy getting to know the normal distribution. Now this video is taken from our course which is Excel VBA Business Simulation from beginner to professional. We've got 41 videos in there, over 10 hours of content. I'm gonna take you through it step by step, how to get to grips with cool statistical techniques like this and get them working for you to generate powerful Excel models that are gonna do things like simulate our business situations, which is super cool. I've done a few projects like that that have turned out really well, but also to do things like generate random data sets, a really important practical thing that if you ever have to do Excel training sessions, or if you have to populate models with data, you can do that at the click of a button. We're going to go through all of that in the Excel VBA Business Simulation course from beginner to professional. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to see you over there. The click is in the description below this video.